This meeting is Hello. being recorded. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. It's Alan Barry Labacan with the Rocks and Stocks News Show. Um, we got another in our executive interviews with junior mining companies that come out with important results. And we got a hot off the presses news release that just went out uh, in the last few minutes from one of our sponsors, Paycor Minerals. Uh, Paycor had, uh, I just, I got to go over these results. Intersects 14.8 meters of 6.3% zinc, 10% lead, 376 grams of silver, and 7.1 grams of gold. Included in that was 5.8 meters of 9.4% zinc, 3% lead, 248 grams of silver, and 15.9 grams of gold from the Polymetallic FAD project. Well done, Christina. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. You guys got to be just very excited about these results. Yeah, it's a really exciting hole because um, if you remember from the results that we put out, uh, the last hole that we put out, which was back in September, right before the Precious Metals Conference in Beaver Creek, uh, it was a, a really splashy hole as well. And it's, that was a 200 meter step out. This is also a 200 meter step out, but it's, and it's down dip as well. So it's proving the continuity of this system uh, down dip, which is nice to see. And um, actually we're at the precious metals conference right now. It's in, happening in Zurich. So I'm quite a few hours ahead of you here, but it's a really good vibe here right now as well. So it was really great to get this, these results out while at the conference today. Got to imagine some sharp people are going to take a look at that. The first thing that stood out to me was the precious metals, 376 yeah. grams of gold and our silver and seven grams of gold over 14.8 meters. I was, when I was thinking yeah. about that, there's mines down here in Mexico where I live that, uh, produce big margins just on that silver number alone. Yeah, it's it's great just to have that. And again, the with the gold mineralization that's in here. So you, you have to remember, again, this is a carbonate replacement deposit. So it should only really have base metals in it. So you have your lead, your your zinc, and, and you get silver in it as well, right? And so that's what a CRD system is, a carbonate replacement deposit. Um, the gold that we're getting here is influenced largely by the big Carlin deposit that's next door. Um, if you remember from you know previous maps, and also I can you know I'll maybe just bring up a slide for you real quick so you can see um, we're located directly next to um, IED the gold. Archimedes pit, which you see here. So IED Gold is just north of us, and there's the Archimedes pit that you see right there. So that's a big Carlin deposit. It produced um, 1.3 million ounces of gold. Your screen isn't showing. Uh... Christine. Oh, it's not showing. <laughs> well, while you're working on that, I want to put things into context because, um, you know, I, I'm very bullish on this Eureka trend, this Eureka area. And um, it was historically well known as a CRD mining area. And uh, what got me excited was I-80 Gold found the Eastern Deeps deposit to the west of their Archimedes pit, which um, uh, Christine is going to share with us in this screen share. And uh, then they followed that up and they extended the, uh, the Ruby Deeps deposit. And they also have the 426 zone, which is directly below the pit. Um, and then they started drilling not very far away to the south of the pit, and they're hitting a spectacular CRD as well. So now it looks like Christina is clipping on their heels with an important CRD deposit that has the gold overprint in it, which brings up the subject of, well, could there be a Carlin style gold deposit in close proximity? So there you got your, uh, your screen share now, uh, Christina, I'll yeah. hand it back to you. Sure. So 
just by reference again, I'm going to show you, I'm just going to flip to the slide here where it shows you where we are. So I-80 is just to the north of us and you can see the Archimedes pit right here. And so that's largely bringing in the, the factor that we're seeing the gold. So I almost, I almost like to say, you know, to essentially compare it to, you know, the meat and potatoes or the base metals and the gold that we're getting is just the gravy. Because when we send this, when this goes to a, a scenario of um, for, in production, the, the the gold credit is just a bonus, an added bonus for us, because the focus here is, again, on the base metals. Um, what I-80 has more recently dis discovered is, again, the, they've they've got this whole, they've discovered a CRD in here, uh, right? It's called Hilltop. And so this slide here that you're seeing on the screen, I-80 is makes up this part of the screen. The white line divides us. That's our border. And we're on the bottom half. So they have the CRD that they've just made the discovery on. It's about a kilometer and a half uh, from the Archimedes pit right to our border. And then of that same structure, which is related to the Jackson fault, we have about three kilometers of, of that, of that structure to test. And so that's really exciting for um, us. Because Christina, it whole, can you go back yeah. to that first image you showed? Cause I want to point something out to people that I think is really important. Um, no, the, this one here? the one that shows the claim maps um, with the pit, you can, oh, there's a structure there that you can see goes right through your ground, right to the Archimedes pit. Um, and if you have it zoom in, you can see secondary faulting as well. So that looks like the plumbing for your whole, your CRD and I-80 CRD. Yeah, it, it could very well be. Um, and, uh, you know, we're still understanding the controls of that. But one of the things that we do know about CRDs is you need the structural controls. And so these faults in this are mass are very, very important because they just, they, you know, have a big blowout zone. And that's kind of how what you see in the formation of a CRD. And so right now. Well, I'm looking at that. You've got lots. Sorry, you've got lots of secondary, quite a complex structural story there, which is quite exciting for the plumbing. Yeah. And so it's, and I'll show you kind of, you know, what, what we've defined to date. So this, the image that you're seeing on your screen right now, it's a 3D, it's a 3D view of the fad mineralization. The red area makes up the existing historic resource. Okay. So that's the 3.5 million tons. And you can see the grade here. Um, the hole that we just drilled, it's right here, 8A. You can see it's here. It's, it was a 200 meter step out from the existing resource. The one that we drilled, the, um, the, that we announced at the Precious Metals Conference in, in September was this 200 meter step out. So you're seeing that it's forming this area in here. And it's, it's the Southeast lobe that we're getting most excited about because we think that we could potentially triple the size of this resource and just by focusing in on the areas sort of surrounding the southeast lobe and doing some definition drilling in here so if you you know i'll go back to a slide before that... you do christina on that slide a couple things stand out to me one is that in that historical uh shell if you step down to your to your uh where you've stepped out as you're going deeper, it looks like the gold and the silver grades are getting better. Yeah, we're still, it's, there's definitely a high grade core that's forming in this down, in down dip. And so we still have to test the extent of that. So we'll continue to step out and test the down dip extension. But for us, the sort of the near term goal is let's do the definition drilling in here and try to add some, you know, some size to this deposit and get that into a, a 43101 resource. The other That's thing that stands out to me is that is looking like a classic CRD model. Uh, of yeah, the that's how they look. Yep. It's exactly What's that? how they look. It's exactly how they, they look. And so I'm going to start um, showing you another slide. I have to stop sharing my screen for a minute. To do sorry, so. sorry to keep interrupting you, Christina, but you got a lot to talk about in each of those slides. Yeah, there's certainly a lot um of exciting things right now going on with the company and um i mean having essentially sort of three targets really there's the fad main zone there's the fad um upper fad which is the oxide zone and now there's this new discovery 
um, related to the Jackson Fault. And if you look at all the exploration, the drilling that was done historically here, everyone focused in the foot wall and that's where Ruby Hill was discovered as well, right? And so it's it's the hanging wall that was overlooked and largely underexplored. And that's where this new discovery corridor is. And that's the that, that's where the Jackson Fault is. And that's where I just made their CRD discovery next door. So it's quite relevant for that. So it's kind of, it's exciting because we essentially have, you know, three targets now. And so I'm just going to bring up another view for you here just to well, kind of show you. It what certainly you wouldn't surprise me if you have something like a Eastern deep story develop in clo fairly close proximity because you've got that gold, yeah. that gold overprint keeps, you know, standing out to me. And yeah, it's it. We, we certainly will take it when we can get it. <laughs> and so again, that's so you know that's again that's the upper part of fat here where the oxide is. Just to put in, this all into perspective for you in, in this image, that's the main zone, and we're defining this area in here right now. We've since been able to drill to, and this is the fad shaft right here. The fad shaft's not it's 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 needs to be dewatered and it'll have to be you know um re recommissioned but it's not something that we're willing to spend capital on right now because we just want to be able to drill and you know discover and actually make discoveries here and, and again this is the other target here so for us too you know obviously you know jim gowans is is top he was barracks top metallurgist um, when I showed him this deposit, it, the gold is what really intrigued him because so, you know, Jim Gowans, so he was, again, he's Barrick's top metallurgist, he's probably top three metallurgist in the, in the globe. He's, um, and when he joined as our chairman, it was huge because, you know, he's obviously very familiar with CRDs given that he was the former president and CEO of Arizona Mining and sold it to South 32 for 1.65 billion and so when he saw this he's like wow this is so, very interesting because you get you have gold in your system and so this could very well develop to be um in terms of grade probably one of the the top and uh, i'd say top three highest grade crds on the globe i have yet to find one yet on an average grade um that's large and again it's the gold that's going to influence that as well um, well but so even I, your your zinc and your lead and your silver yeah is uh yeah higher. arizona mining was a combined uh arizona mining was combined 10 percent lead and zinc and we're probably getting averaging here around 13 14 percent average uh grade of lead and zinc combined just and as what, we see it right now what was their silver numbers but like um because those silver numbers are standing out to me as well uh christina yeah it's good to get the silver in there as well for and um and you know we'll take we'll take it. And obviously, one of the biggest things I think that is could be you know when, when you look at that potential a potential production scenario, it's huge that I eighty just announced last week that they're converting their current um, mill leach operations into a base metal uh, operation, which was going to pr produce uh, silver lead zinc con. So they're going to have the ability to produce these concentrates and they're just next door to us. So uh, as you can see, we share a border. And so that's exciting because there's a lot of synergies there. And I mean, obviously, I think, you know, the logical thing is there to be some kind of potential consolidation at one point, given all of the synergies uh, with both of our Ruby Hill and their Ruby Hill and now our CRD and their CRDs. And so um It'll it'll be exciting to see what happens in the next, you know. Um, well, it would it would make a lot of sense and... because you're you're on the same fault system. You got the same plumbing system. You got the same kind of grades, and uh, yeah. you know it's uh, it's quite spectacular. I, you know, I can only chalk it up to you guys being such a young company. Um, you know why more people don't know about Paycor. But I certainly think they're going to know more in the coming coming future with what you guys are doing. Yeah, we have another hole to announce here. It's just got caught up in the lab and hole number 10. Um, we should have that another week or two. Uh, so we'll announce that. Um, we'll make an uh, announcement uh, to um, a group, another individual that's going to be joining the team as well as, a, as an advisor. And he was you know, highly recommended by Jim Gowans. And so we're, and, you know, and then we have this, all the historic core and the data from the historic core that's, we can now use 
towards a 43101. So that was that was a big development for us as well because now we've just reduced our capital significantly and the time on and, and path to to get there quicker and to put this into an NI4301 compliant resource. You know, someone brought up a point recently that I I I didn't really think about until he put, mentioned it and that you know, with the inflation that's going on and your costs of producing material in drill core, um, if you've got that sunk in there already, you don't have to reproduce that. And at, at with inflation, it would be more costly to reproduce that. So you guys are got a heck of a jump start there with all that. Yeah, coal. we definitely do. Um, we have a great, and the interesting thing is too, is it was drilled in the 50s. 40s and 50s and so we don't know what they didn't know back then um so we're gonna open up every core box and look at all, uh, every bit of that core because they could have they could have been high grading they could have they certainly didn't know about carlin um alteration because it hadn't been discovered yet so right. it'll be interesting to see what we find in there and so we're pretty excited to get going at it i bet i bet and um so you have some more slides there to show us yeah, I'll show you one more. This for us, it's kind of the exciting part of the the upside here, um, is when we looked at some of the the down dip extension and I uh, had our exploration manager model what some of the just all the historical data and the historical holes that were drilled down dip, and this is right now what we've defined, and this is the southeast slope. That's where the resource is right in here. But with all of the historical data that we're seeing these holes down here intercepted high grade some 13 percent let uh zinc and so we have this whole down dip of extension to test here that's been this and this, this is an all-in section as you can see it's so these are all sort of scattered so there's a whole zone down here which is the whole it's still the eldorado dolomite which is the host rock and that we still have yet to test but again they're you know they're they're a bit they're a deep, they're deeper holes and in this market we decided the focus should just right now be here. We'll, we will eventually test some of this and we'll eventually going to drill that new um, discovery corridor that we've been calling it uh, related to the Jackson Falls. Cause that's going to be a very interesting target in there as well. Certainly looks that, like it, very, it was plunges in that it's, it's direction. It's in the formation. Seems like it plunges in that direction based on your model. Well, the good it's the, the it'll, it'll be higher in the stratigraphy actually the uh, the Goodwin formation and so it it just gives us another another opportunity another target. So Gary's our exploration geologist is dying to get out there and drill that that and that's that all contained within two faults, right? Yeah, I mean it's th those there's um, some splay faults as well associated with both both Ruby Hill and the Jackson Falls and 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 again it opens up a conduit for mineralization when you have them converge when you have them I mean structure is key key for CRDs and key for for especially I think you district. can see those in your slide 11 there yeah well that in fact it was another thing to note is that this the reason why that we you know I was able to make this discovery is because um, until recent, you know, you know, in the last couple decades, um, this fault was not uh, explored because it's undercover. If you look on the left side of the screen here, this mm -hmm. is a generated by two PhDs at the University of Arizona and co-authored by a senior ge exploration geologist at Barrick. Uh, the idea is the red is the CRDs, it's Carlin car carbon replacement deposits, and the Carlin style uh, deposits are yellow. The solid blue line is fault structures that are known. They're tested and they've been known about and drilled. The dotted line was to really highlight that there's fault systems undercover, poorly, ex poorly expo exposed and uh, underexplored because, again, they were undercover. So that's this black circle is just blown up right here. And you can see that's, you know, it, it, this is so it's all undercover here, which is why it was largely untested. And so that's where the discovery is next door. And we're going to test that whole structure right here to see, you know, what what is in the hanging wall, what is in the Goodwin formation that that was not. They may be under they may be undercover, but you can certainly see the uh, feature. 
Yeah, no, well, those are, these are the faults right here, the spring right. faults and yeah. So and you can't the test water. them, but you can see the, all the, all the, the, the regional fault there and all the secondary faulting. Yep. In that permeable um, rock, which is also important for a CRD. You need the right kind of sponge to get the deposit, uh, the, the fluids in there. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, for us, it's obviously, it's pretty, it's pretty exciting that we have a lot of exploration to do and we're going to, and I think that we're also going to be able to generate, you know, we have the press release next week on hole 10 um, and we'll be able to generate some news and um, hopefully create some excitement around what we're going to find in all throughout this historical core that we're, that we're logging right now. Right. When do you think that might be uh, completed and and uh, some some reports on that? Uh, it's it's a big program. Given there's, I mean, there's one of the one of the buildings had we, that we cataloged had twenty holes, um, with each hole being around twenty five hundred to thirty five hundred feet, and so oh. it's a lot of core to log. Yeah. Right. So we'll we're pretty anxious to get some results on it and. Um, over the next several months, what we should have something we should have something out on some of that some of that news. And what's your plans for drilling and creating some more news on that front, uh, Christina? Because the truth machine is certainly uh, giving you lots yeah. of encouragement there. Well, we just actually received eight more boxes of data uh, only in the last month, and that's going to now contribute to Gary building his model to generate these targets. And so he's um, in the process of generating new targets and which we'll follow up with, uh, with, with drilling, but we certainly have um, the priority targets being, you know, to better define the existing resource and step out and prove some lateral continuity, but, but try to get this into a situation where we can have it in an NI43101 resource. Cause I believe, you know, the market will need that. I, wants that conviction. So I think that we, you know, we could potentially triple this just with what we know right now. And, mm -hmm. you know, if you look at the, if you know about CRDs, um, that puts us in the upper range of, of the, of, you know, getting into size um, and, and what's above average first in terms of size. Uh, Arizona mining is just an anomaly. It was a massive, massive over hundred and two million tons. So it's, that was a really big and unique, um, situation and and um average it, it averaged out to be like i said 10 percent lead zinc um i think that this is going to average out to be around 13 14 percent um obviously wow. much smaller right wow. now but uh in terms of grade we're, we're looking to be pretty high grade well there's certainly lots of reasons that you could wave your arms out there um uh about the uh about the um uh, about the size, uh, based on the uh, faulting yeah. and uh, and the uh, permeable rock. That's right. Yeah. So we'll just we're gonna keep on drilling, and um, hopefully the lab has some better turnaround time to get this news out because it's been it's been difficult uh, waiting and waiting, and I'm sure everyone is saying the same thing in the market, and um, but. Uh, yeah, the labs are just completely backed up. So hopefully, hope, hoping to get this next hole out in the next week or two. Good. Well, you've got a, it sounds like you've got lots of catalysts ahead of you. And then you've got, it looks like gold and silver are starting to turn the corner. Um, been yeah. performing very well for the last week. Yeah, it definitely has seemed to turn a bit in here in the market. So let's, Let's hope that we can continue this uh, this role that we're having in the resource space. There's definitely a buzz among the conference right now, and um, there's a reception down there right now. And I don't know if you can hear it in the background; it's quite loud. But certainly, uh, Pierre Lasson just gave his talk, and everyone's in pretty good spirits here with the metal with the the resource space. So, well, as they should be. I think the big thing with gold is that you know it's been fighting a bit of an uphill battle because of the price of the U.S. dollar being so powerful. But that's been a parabolic move in the U.S. dollar, um, fueled by the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. And I think that the action that you're seeing in the gold and the U.S. dollar 
kind of shows you that the market is concerned about the the U.S. dollar, and every yeah. time there's any sign uh, that it's going to get uh, under pressure, the gold is blasting off, and silver as well. So I'm quite optimistic yeah. we're we're turning a corner here. I am too. I am too, Alan. <laughs> All right. Well, Christina, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to wrap it up. We can have a chat at the other end. Okay. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Well, there you go, folks. Um, Paycor, not a very old company. It's been trading for less than a year. Um, they've got some really powerful people involved, uh, especially when you put it into the context of looking for a carbonate replacement deposit, a CRD. Uh, they've got the guy who was the CEO and uh, president of Arizona Mining, which was a fantastic company for me to cover on my report uh, and um, subsequently uh, they were about a 30 cent stock when I first started covering them and they went on to be bought out for over a, around a billion and a half because they found a CRD in in, um, in Arizona and uh, Jim Gowans was you know responsible for helping find it and sell the company and now he's involved with uh, Paycor. And I, I got to believe that he's extremely excited because they've got the right kind of plumbing. They've got that big, deep vaulting that the cracks in the earth that allow the fluids to come up with the, and then they've got the uh, right kind of rock sponge for it to get into. And most importantly, they're getting this tremendous grade. But what is the equally as exciting is the grade of the silver and the gold. These deposits aren't supposed to have gold in them. So uh, with that grade of gold, that that's like gravy. And it also points towards the potential of, well, where did that gold come from? It didn't come from the mineralization of the CRD. It has to come from somewhere else. And when you get that kind of thickness and that kind of grade, it's suggestive of something that could be quite exciting. Then you're in a camp where there's uh, there's lots of exciting stuff going on on the gold front. So this company has a very modest valuation, a whole slew of catalysts ahead of them. In addition to the ground, their own ground, they also have the potential for catalysts of excitement coming from their neighbor, I-80 Gold, on several fronts. They're finding a CRD right next door, and they've got this mining capacity that could be very important for Paycor as well. I don't think it's going to be very long before Paycor has a much more, a much higher valuation, uh, plenty of catalysts, and then you've got the gold and silver catalyst potential as well to bring a lot of investors to the space and the Nevada premium potential. So they've got a lot of great things going on, and I uh, as always, I, I think it's important for you to speak with your financial advisors, do your homework, and as you do your homework, I'll th I think you'll clearly see that there's a lot of unlocked value uh, that has the catalyst to be unlocked. And um, I'm very optimistic about the future of Paycor, and I think it's one you want to look at putting in your portfolio. On that note, have a great day, and we will talk to you soon.